to subscribe! It's dangerous to be out without a mask on a polluted day. Let's learn about air pollution safety. Tiny dust particles in the air that are too small for our eyes to see is bad for our health. Learn about safety actions for each pollution level. Press the buttons from top to bottom. On a good day, open the windows to clear the air. On a moderate day, be aware when you go outside. On an unhealthy for sensitive groups day, wear a mask and take a shower after you come home. On an unhealthy day, don't go outside and close the windows. <laughs> it's an unhealthy day. What should we do? Close the windows to keep out the pollution. Press the air purifier button to get rid of the pollution. You can do it! Good job! Now we're safe from pollution. Swish swash. Wash bottle clean. Use the body wash. Make bubbles with a sponge. Wash the bubbles with water. Dry photo with a towel. Photo is clean. Thanks a lot. Wow, it's a good day. What should we do? Open the windows to clear the air. Don't give up! <laughs> Hang the laundry on the clothesline. <laughs> Move the sun around to dry the laundry. <laughs> the clothes are dry. Now let's move them to the basket. Was terrific! <laughs> wow! Now we're safe from air pollution! Always remember, air pollution safety! <laughs> <laughs> Hi there, Blowfish! A shark! Run away! Quick! Touch the Blowfish to defeat the shark! You rascals! You rascals! You rascals! You rascals! Gah! 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 Whoa! The shark <laughs> ran away! That was amazing! Touch the blowfish to pop all the flying balloons!
<laughs> Great job! Yahoo! Feels danger. 
hard stuff. Wow, it's the cute Larga Seal friend. Larga seals are also called earless seals. They usually swim under the sea, but on land, they crawl using their belly and front legs. They like to eat fish and clams, but some seals are strong enough to attack dolphins. had lost her parents when she was young, so she was living with her stepfamily. Uh, I'm so miserable. <laughs> I can't wait for the party. Let's go, girls. <laughs> Petty's stepsisters love for the ball, leaving <laughs> Petty to do all the housework. <laughs> I want to go too! Suddenly, with a burst of light, a fairy appeared. I've come to help you, Petty. The fairy waved her hand and finished all the cleaning and the laundry. Wow! This is amazing! Now I'll send you off to the ball. The fairy changed a pumpkin into a carriage and a mouse into a horse. Patty also got a beautiful dress. This is beautiful!
You must remember, you have to come home before the clock strikes twelve. Petty made her promise to the fairy and rode the carriage to the castle. When Petty arrived at the ball, everyone was surprised. Oh my! I've never seen anyone so beautiful! Beautiful lady, may I have this dance? Sure! Petty and the prince danced together happily. Just then, the clock struck twelve. Petty remembered her promise to the fairy and ran out of the castle. Running in a hurry, Petty fell down and lost one of her shoes. Running after Petty, the prince picked it up. My lady! By the time Petty returned home, the spell had lost its magic. She was back in her old clothes and old shoes. I wish I had more time. But the next day, the prince and his assistant came to Petty's house. The prince had been visiting all the homes to find the owner of the shoe. Petty's stepsisters greedily tried on the shoe, but it didn't fit them. Ow, my foot hurts, Krong. Hmm, I don't think this is your shoe. Just then, Petty came out holding the other shoe. Bororo recognized her at once. My beautiful lady! My name is Cinderella Petty. Cinderella, will you marry me? Yes, Prince Bororo. So Prince Bororo and Petty got married and lived happily ever after. Once upon a time, there was a miller who passed down his possessions to his three sons. He left the mill to his eldest, the donkey to his second son, and the cat to his youngest son. The youngest Poby was poor, but a kind man, so he gave the last of his bread to the cat. The cat responded to Poby. Thank you, master. If you get me a pair of boots, a hat, and a bag, I'll make it up to you. Poby was surprised that the cat could talk, but still gave him everything he asked for. The next day, the Puss in Boots went to the forest and brought back a rabbit. Then he took the rabbit to the castle where King Harry lived. Your Majesty, my Master Lord Carabas sends you this rabbit as a gift. I see! After that, the cat continued to bring gifts to the king in his master's name. One day, King Harry was crossing a bridge while riding his carriage. Master, hurry! Take off your clothes and jump in the river! Huh? Okay. Then the cat shouted towards the king's carriage. Help us! Lord Carapace has fallen into the water! King Harry's men held Toby safely out of the water. What awful thieves! They stole all my master's clothing! Oh. 
listening to the cat story, King Harry lent some of his clothes to Poby. At that moment, Princess Loopy saw Poby in the royal clothing and fell in love with him. King Harry decided to take Poby back to his home on his carriage. The Puss in Boots quickly went to the land where a cruel ogre ruled and said to Petty the Farmer, If you say this land belongs to Lord Carabas, I will chase away the org. After a while, the king's carriage arrived. Whose land is this? It belongs to Lord Carabas. Hearing the farmer's words, King Harry liked Poby even more. Meanwhile, the cat entered the ogre's castle. I have come after hearing about your greatness. Could I see your magical transformation? The ogre turned himself into a dragon. Roar! What do you think? What greatness! Can you even turn into a small mouse? Of course I can! The ogre turned into a small mouse. Then the cat quickly picked up the mouse and swallowed it. When the carriage arrived, the cat opened the gate and announced to the king and his men, Welcome to Lord Carabas's castle! Toby really had become Lord Carbos, and later on even got married to Princess Lily. Together, the Puss in Boots and his master lived happily ever after. Once upon a time, there was a girl named Wendy Petty who liked Peter Pan. She always read about him in bedtime stories. Oh, I wish I could go to Neverland! Just then, the window flew open and Peter Pan in his shadow came inside. I caught you! <laughs> are, are you Peter Pan? Hello! My shadow ran away, and I chased after it. But how do I stick this back onto me? I'm Wendy Petty. I'll help you. It didn't take long for Petty to sew Peter Pan's shadow back onto his feet. Yay, thanks! Do you want to go to Neverland with me? Petty was excited. When Peter Pan sprinkled some fairy dust on Petty, she started to float up into the air. Huh? I can fly! Off to Neverland! Yippee! The two flew into the night sky, off to Neverland, the land of adventure. A few moments later, they arrived at Neverland, and Petty was so happy. Wow! So this is Neverland! It's a dream come true! <laughs> As they arrived, Peter Pan's friends came out to greet them. It was Tinkerbell the Fairy and some others that lived together with Peter Pan. Nice to meet you! Then Peter Pan brought Petty to a lake where the mermaids lived. <gasps> you are so beautiful! <laughs> you are so sweet! Nice to meet you!
Next, they went to an Indian village and danced together with the Indians. <laughs> this is so much fun! I love it here! I'm glad you like it! But then, a black cook sneaked up from behind Petty. Oh no! Captain Hook captured Petty! If you want to save this girl, bend your knee to me! You evil monster! Peter Pan and his friends all bended their knee to save Petty. Just then, they heard a strange clock ticking noise. It was the crocodile that ate Captain Hook's clock. Uh, it's the crocodile! Ah! While Bororo was panicking, Peter Pan quickly tied Bororo up with a rope. Got it! How do you like that, Captain Hook? <laughs> I made a mistake! I'm sorry! After dealing with the villain, Mother Lamb found peace again. All the friends celebrated together late into the night. Now it was time for Petty to go home. Bye! I had such a wonderful time! Is it again? The friends said their goodbyes and promised each other to meet again. One day, a curious girl named Alice Petty was on a picnic when she heard a strange sound. Huh? What is that? Goodness! A rabbit holding a watch jumped out of a bush. Oh dear! I'm in a hurry! Wow! A talking rabbit! Oh, I shall be late! Petty was so curious that she ran after the white rabbit as he bolted away. Wait for me, rabbit! But as she was chasing the rabbit, she fell into a deep tunnel. <gasps> Petty fainted during the fall. When she woke up, she saw two tables in front of her. One table had a big cookie on it, and the other had a small cookie on it. I wonder what this is. Should I try the small one first? How strange! As soon as she ate the cookie, she shrunk into a tiny person. What happened? I shrunk! After turning small, Petty got out of the cave through a small hole. As soon as she stepped outside, she saw a forest, and the white rabbit was there. Hey! You are that rabbit! Did you follow me? The white rabbit introduced his friends to Petty. Hello! I'm Eddie the Hatter! I'm Loopy the Duchess! I'm Alice Petty. It's great to know you. Let's play together. Petty was having a great time with her new friends. Aww. 
But then, the Queen of Hearts came with her men. Hi, I'm Harry, the Queen of Hearts. I'm looking for the thief that stole my red rose. Then Harry saw a red rose on the table. You are the culprits! No, we're not. I brought that here from another land. But the queen did not believe Bordo. You're lying! Lock up these thieves at once! Petty wanted to save her friends. Wondering what to do, she decided to eat the large cookie. <laughs> you won't get away with this! Yum, yum, yum. Wow! Petty's body grew super tall. Take this! Petty jumped up and down, and the ground shook like an earthquake. As the knights fell down, the Queen of Hearts ran away crying. I made a mistake. I won't do that again. <laughs> Served her right. You were the best. Defeating the Queen of Hearts, Petty and her new friends celebrated throughout the night. <laughs>